Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to pull apart and reassemble this cheap airbrush, double action airbrush. Let's get into it. Remove the handle first, unscrew the needle locking nut, pull the needle out. You can see, you can see this is a 0.2 mil. So remove the locking nut the assembly. You can definitely feel the quality isn't as good as something like the Awada, Badger, Harder and Steambeck, all those other airbrushes, the brand name airbrushes, but I still want to show you how it all comes apart and how to get it back together just in case you did grab yourself one of these. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the, the nozzle. So you can see the nozzle there. So we're gonna use the Awada nozzle wrench to do so, much better than the wrenches that they give you in the kits, which can cross thread and then snap off that thread in the housing, which is not good. This just removes it nice and easily and also holds it into place so that you don't drop it. So there we go, nozzle removed. So now I'm going to remove this part. Loosen that. See that casing, very different to a lot of the airbrushes, but you can see the uh, hole there where the air comes through and where the nozzle actually screws right in. Okay, so Remove the cup, which is kind of cool because you can use it as an inkwell as well. Get in now and remove the plunger assembly. Need one of these tools. You just need those two prongs and put them into the hole there and then you unscrew it. And you gotta be careful because once this comes loose, the spring's gonna wanna pop out. Now with the Awada brushes, this sits really snug. This one, not so much. If you haven't seen any of my videos where I put this airbrush up against the Iwata Eclipse, then check them out. I'm gonna put some uh, links in the description so you can have a look at those videos. I did a couple of versus ones and also one creating some artwork using both brushes. All right, so that's the plunger assembly. See the spring there, that comes off. So whenever you're Whenever your trigger is sticking, so if you find that you press down on your trigger and it just sticks and holds on the air, a lot of the time it's this area here, the plunger assembly might have a little bit of dirt on it somewhere and that's just uh, then grabbing and making that air stay on. Okay, so almost pulled the whole thing apart. Unscrew this. You can see the machining isn't the best, but as you'll see in my videos, the airbrush definitely does work, performs um, well enough for someone who's never tried airbrushing before and just wants to give it a go and it's a, a cheap way of getting into the hobby. I'm also going to go ahead and remove the needle packing which is in there. don't know if you can see that. I'm going to use this tool here, you can see the um, it's got that guiding prong and then almost like a little um, Phillips head on the end there to unscrew the needle packing. So let's go ahead and do that now. There we have it. And that's the screw there that's come out and the little seal there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put it all back together. Okay, before I put it back together, a quick shot of all the parts. And the tools that I used to pull it apart. These are all part of the Iwata Toolkit, the main professional maintenance kit. Definitely worth getting yourself one. They have absolutely everything you need. Okay, starting off with the front. Screw that back on. I'm just gonna do it all finger tight 
Uh, we need the nozzle. Okay, so what I do with the nozzle is I screw it in by hand first, just to catch that thread. And then once that's into place, be careful not to drop it, then I'll tighten it up with the nozzle wrench. And placing that back on. And the air cap. Gonna go fit that cup back on. You could also use it without the cup, just using that inkwell. Okay, so now we need to work on the plunger assembly. So we'll get this part here, spring sits like so. And that part goes towards the top, and then tip it upside down, drop that back in, get the little tool, and start, I press down, start winding that back up. Now this one doesn't exactly work as well for this brush as it would for the old water. And to test to make sure it's put together correctly, just press down a couple of times and you should feel the springiness, then you know it's uh, put together correctly. Now screwing that back on here. Okay, so now that the plunger assembly is fitted, before we fit the trigger, I have to fit the uh, needle packing back into that area there. So let's go ahead and do that. Grab this little tool, line it back up again and guide it in and just spin that around to screw it back in until it's tight and then I usually go about a quarter about a quarter turn loosen it so that you can get your needle back through so you can't have it fully tightened because then you won't be able to put your needle through okay so now with the trigger a good way to know which way to put the trigger in is that notch identifies the back and this is one of those triggers which is a bit more difficult to put in. It's got that wobbly spot there which you have to kind of line up in that hole. So just going like that, line it up and then if you've done it correctly you should have that action of uh, you can feel the, the uh, spring bouncing up and down. Now we're going to fit this on there, guide that through and up. So through and up to so put the spring on. Put this back on and this is virtually your trigger tension so the more you screw this in right so that's pretty much all the way that's going to give you a much tighter throw if you loosen that off then you'll see it's smoother I'll loosen it right off there you go Still flicks back reasonably quick, but you can, like, you can't feel it obviously because you're watching a video. But I can definitely feel that that's smoother. Okay, again with the machining, you can see how that's pulling back, and and it's not 100% accurate. But again, if you're someone who's never used an airbrush before, you just want to give it a go. These are still perfectly fine for that. And um, when you do finally get a branded brush, then you'll um, keep this for backgrounds and you know priming and whatnot. All right, so re reinsert the needle. So the locking nut, screw it on, push the needle in until it seats. Don't like jam it, like don't force it too hard because you could split the fluid nozzle. You don't want to do that, split or flare it. And then tighten this up. So I've, I've got this a bit too loose now, the locking nut won't tighten. Okay, and then to make sure that it's all correctly put together, pull back on the needle and make sure the needle is moving when you pull back. If it's not, then you'll fill this all up with paint and you'll pull back and nothing will happen because that needle needs to move back and forth to allow that paint to come through. Okay, so final piece of the puzzle is the handle that just screws back on. And there you have it, pulling apart and reassembling a cheap airbrush. Be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here so that you can continue your learning. And until next time, grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video.